Hi, I'm Dustin Weiniger. Back with the big iron again today, the massive Colt Walker. But I'm not doing any shooting today. I've already fired this gun, got it a bit dirty. So today I want to show you how I clean a cap and ball percussion revolver. Now I just want to start by saying there are a lot of different opinions on how to clean any type of firearm. I'm not necessarily saying that what you're going to learn here today is the only way or maybe even the best way. But it's a good way. It's a way that works for me very well on my black powder firearms. And I'm going to be using the walker because number one, it's dirty, but also because the parts are very large, which I hope will help you to see everything I'm doing clearly. Now, as I go through the process, I'll be demonstrating each of the steps pretty quickly, just so we don't have too long of a video for you to sit through. But remember, when you clean your gun, be sure to take all the time you need on each step to get the results you're looking for. Well, why don't we go ahead and head inside and we'll get started. The first step is to disassemble the gun. And to do that, I'm just going to remove the wedge and the barrel, and then remove these two screws. With those screws removed, the loading lever and the rammer will just come right out. The cylinder can now just pull off if the hammer is on half cock. Now, I'm not going to take this frame apart any further. Once in a great while, I'll do that and wipe down the internal parts, but I've honestly never found corrosion in there, so I don't do that very often. I did recently receive a comment from someone on a Reddit page who said he did have parts end up with corrosion in there. So once in a while I would recommend you do that, but today I'm just showing you the very basic cleaning that I do after every trip to the range. Now, I'm going to take these small parts and spray them down with the moose milk solution, which is 10 parts water to one part ballistol is the recommended mixture. I'm actually using five parts water to one part ballistol. And you can just call it paranoia. It just gives me extra protection from rust. But I'll just squirt down these little pieces, including the screws and the frame also, just all over. But the barrel and the cylinder, I'm going to go and run under hot running water. Here's a before shot of what the inside of the bore looks like before it gets flushed with water. And I'll show you an after shot in just a moment. Now as soon as I put this barrel down here in this nice hot water, you're going to see the black sludge and fouling just immediately start to fall right out of there. You see how black that is coming out? And now that it's wet, I'm going to take a cleaning rod with a 45 caliber brush and just run that through the barrel several times. Normally I do 25 times, but when you're running hot water before your patches, it usually doesn't take quite that many. I'll rinse the brush off a little bit in between passes. Not every pass, but just occasionally. I'll run that just a few more times. And let me show you how good that bore is already looking just with hot water. Now with the cylinder, I'm going to run the hot water through all the chambers, starting from the front, and I hope you can see all that fouling that just falls right out of it. It just melts right off. Now if you're shooting Pyrodex and some of the other substitutes, it might be a little bit dirtier, but the black powder is very easy to get off. Then I'll take a toothbrush to the back of the cylinder and just get all the little corners nooks and crannies on the back and I'm going to take my cleaning brush down into these openings where the nipples go not down into the threads but just into the openings and just give it a few twists and that really helps to get some of those hard to reach areas later on in the cleaning process And that's all six, and we're ready to go back out to the table. So these parts out here have been soaking for a few minutes now in moose milk, and I even have the nipples soaking in a cup of moose milk. And now that the cylinder and the barrel have been washed out with water, I'm gonna spray some moose milk all over each of those as well, and just let that soak a little bit. Even inside the bore. And I'll rejoin you in a moment when they've had a couple of minutes to soak.
Now that everything has had time to soak, I'm going to spray a patch with the moose milk, place it over the front of my cylinder, and start running it through the chambers. And don't panic if you see some surface rust forming in these chambers from the hot water from earlier. That's fairly common, but it is just surface rust and it cleans right out and it does no permanent damage to your gun. Today I'm actually not seeing any of that, but it can happen, so just be aware of that. Now that those have all been cleaned out with a patch, I'll take dry patches now and just start to dry them. I usually do three chambers with one patch, just like that, and the other three with another patch. And you'll notice that these patches still come out a bit dirty, so it'll take more than one time around. So you'll just repeat that process until you get clean patches coming out of the chambers. Now the chambers are all clean and I've wiped the outside of the cylinder down with a cotton rag. So now to get these openings in the back I'm going to use Q-tips and if you look closely you can see the moose milk still puddled in there. And I'll just take a Q-tip and push it down into the tight areas of that and clean out that little bit of fouling that's in there. And I just use one Q-tip on each opening so I'm not just further contaminating the others. And you'll just repeat this process until all six have been wiped out clean and dry. Right through the middle of your cylinder, you're going to find a big hole for the arbor of your revolver. And to dry that, I just take a cotton rag and just push it through the hole, twisting as I go, so it'll go all the way through until it comes out the other side like this, and then just pull it. And a large rag like this won't go all the way through, but just pull it till it's tight and then back out and that will dry that hole out completely. With the cylinder completed it's time to move on to the barrel and I'm going to start just by wiping off the outside getting that dry. You may see a little bit of fouling coming off but not much. These cap and ball revolvers don't build up too much on their outsides. Get the back and then I'm going to spray down another patch with moose milk and put that in the bore from the breech end. Just push it all the way through and I'll even pull it back out and then through again. And after running through hot water you can see there's not much fouling left in there. And so now, just like I did on the chambers, it's just a matter of pushing dry patches through until they're coming out clean. Now the next step on the barrel is to get inside all of these little tiny areas and the way I do that is with Q-tips and for easier access I went ahead and removed now the wedge screw and the wedge itself and I'm just going to push Q-tips into all these areas and there's moose milk already in there and just work those areas until I'm getting clean Q-tips coming out and you can see there's not too much fouling anyway but just repeat this process over all these areas until your Q-tips are clean and those areas are dry. Now for the frame, I've just re-wetted again with moose milk and I'm going to take this dry cotton rag and just start wiping it down everywhere. The whole frame, hold the hammer back as you wipe the trigger so you're not snapping it, but just dry that off. The arbor, that's where you'll get a little bit of old grease and some fouling. Down inside of the frame, just everywhere that you can reach, all over the hammer, and just wipe that off. And as you go, you'll notice a lot of this black fouling and carbon coming off. So you'll have to wipe it off, and then you can reapply moose milk if necessary, if it's still not clean, and then wipe it down again. And on the small, hard to reach areas, I'll take Q-tips and just wet them with moose milk a little bit. And those will fit like down inside the action here in front of the hammer and you will pull a little bit of fouling out of there, like you can see, not too much, but just repeat that with a wet Q-tip and then a dry end, and repeat until they're coming out clean. Again, I don't take this frame apart, usually, but just use this process to get it clean in there. You can also use Q-tips in all these little narrow nooks and crannies in the front, and up here in this slot in the arbor, and just repeat all of this until it's all clean. Now with those big parts all cleaned, it's time to work on the small pieces, like the wedge. This is just a matter of quickly wiping them down. They've all been soaking. The screws, just quickly wipe them off. The 
little wedge screw, the rammer, and make sure you get the little corners up here. And also on the rammer, you've got a couple of hard to reach areas, like inside this little slot, but a Q-tip will get in there perfectly and just wipe that out. And also in the front where it seats onto the ball, there's a tight little space that needs to be wiped clean. And a Q-tip will fit in there nicely as well. I'll do one more just to make sure those are good and clean. And then the loading lever. Just wipe that entirely dry. Not much coming off of there. That was pretty clean. And it has one tight area right down in here. But again, a Q-tip will reach in there easily. So you can just wipe the faces down there dry and clean. Get in that little tight hole, wipe that dry. And now we're ready to move on to cleaning the nipples. Now the nipples have been soaking down in this cup of moose milk. And I'm just going to pour that moose milk out, give them a quick rinse with hot water. Make sure that your drain is closed up enough that if you drop one, you don't lose it down into the plumbing. Now I'm going to take each nipple Run it under the hot water. You don't want to burn yourself, but you will want that water as hot as you can tolerate to help dry the metal later. I'm going to rinse this toothbrush off and just brush off the entire outside of the nipple, getting all the corners and also all the threads. There will be some grease in there from the last cleaning, as you'll see me apply that later. And then down inside of the nipple needs to be cleared out too. Your nipple wrench should come with a little pick, which you can put down inside the nipple all the way through and just run it back and forth, making sure everything's cleared out of there so the sparks won't be obstructed the next time you shoot. And I'll set that aside and just repeat it on the other five. Now that the nipples are clean, they do need to be dried. And the hot water and the heat of that hot water, you'll notice has already started them drying. The metal gets hot and causes fast evaporation. But I still like to give them just a quick wipe down, basically just squeezing it with a rag. And if you look inside of the nipple, which I doubt you'll see on camera, you'll usually see it plugged up a little bit by a little bit of water. But I found if I just blow through it, that'll usually clear that right out and then just give it one more quick wipe down. And just repeat that for all six of them. Now that everything is clean and dry, next step is to wipe everything down with a generous coat of Ballistol. So I'll just put a good amount of that onto a rag, and I'm just going to start wiping all the pieces down with it, getting them good and saturated. And I'll come back to the little parts like in there with a Q-tip in just a moment, just like I did when I cleaned them. But for this step, it's just a matter of coating everything with the ballista. All the screws, and don't forget the wedge as well. These little parts go pretty fast. Now this is also going to continue on the outside of the cylinder, the outside of the barrel, all of the frame and the arbor. And I won't show all that on camera for the sake of time, but I do want to show that when you get to the bore and the chambers, those are just done with cleaning patches. So I'm going to soak a patch with the Ballistol thoroughly. Put it over the breech end of the bore. There we go. And then just push it through with a cleaning rod. And I'll usually push it through and then back it out and then push it in again, just making sure I'm soaking all the pores of that metal. And then just set that aside. And you'll do that the same way on each of your firing chambers. In fact, I'll just start that with the same patch Just pushing it down in, twisting it around, making sure you work that ballista all into all the corners. And just do all the chambers, making sure you leave a good, generous coating on all of them. Now these parts have all been soaking in the ballista for about 20 minutes. I like to leave it like that so that the ballista can penetrate into the pores of the metal and leave a great rust protection. 
Now it's a matter of just wiping the excess off. And I'll start with the bore. And I'm just going to push one cleaning patch through the bore just one time to get the excess out. And there's still a little bit of a coating in there, but at least it's not pulled up. And you'll do the same thing in the chambers, which I won't show on camera. Just run a patch through each one. And then for the rest of the parts, it's just a matter of taking a fresh rag and just wiping them down just lightly, not applying a lot of pressure because again, you do want to leave a thin film, but just wipe, or lightly, excuse me, wipe down each piece until you've done them all, including the wedge and the screws. And any of the small, hard to reach areas, like down in here and down below the hammer, just like before, you can just use Q-tips to go over all those. So I'll just give this a quick wipe down off camera, I'll run Q-tips through all the narrow areas, and I'll rejoin you in a moment. After everything has been wiped down and the excess ballista has been removed, next thing to do is just put your gun back together. I'll do most of that off camera as you probably know how to put your gun back together, but the first step is to put the nipples back in the cylinder, and I do want to just quickly go over that. These threads need to be protected by an anti-seize grease. That way, if you do end up getting any surface rust down in those holes or in the threads, they don't get seized up and you'll still be able to remove them later the next time you take it apart. So what I'm going to use here is this Thompson Center Super Lube Anti-Seize Lubricant. And I just put just a little bit on the threads in about three spots, not applying much at all, and then just sort of push it around and work it into those threads. Then, I just drop the nipple down into the first hole, and you have to be very careful not to strip these. And the way you can do that, there's a little trick. If you twist the nipple wrench backwards to the left until you feel a slight click, you'll know that your nipple has now dropped properly into the threads, and then you can just quickly twist it down. Don't over tighten it, but do just twist it down firmly and then you'll be able to do it without stripping it, and you'll just repeat that now on the other five. Well, now that I've got my gun completely reassembled, there's just one last step, and that's just to pick it up, take a dry rag, and just give one last very light wipe down for any remaining excess ballistol that may be on it. And that is it. Now, as I said at the very beginning of the video, I demonstrated this going through the steps pretty fast because this video, again, is just meant to show you what the steps are. But remember, when you clean your gun, take all the time you need on each step to get the results that you well, as want. Always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please remember to click that like button below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And we're back. Today, as promised, we're going to announce the winner of last week's giveaway for a $15 Cabela's gift card. If you win, make sure you leave a comment down below telling me how you'd like me to contact you so that I can get that mailed off to you. But before we draw a name from here, first of all, we have all the names here, everyone who entered the drawing, and it's a pretty good showing, I think, 21 entries, so that's a great turnout for this. I appreciate that. And before we draw, I just want to thank all of you who have subscribed, whether you win this giveaway or not. And those of you who maybe haven't subscribed yet, but you're viewing, however you're supporting the channel is greatly appreciated. And if you like supporting the channel, there's actually a new Patreon page for my channel. There'll be more information coming out pretty soon about that once it's ready to go. Now, if you don't win this giveaway, there will be another one, a better one, at 1,000 subscribers. So if you don't win today, share the videos, get the subscriber count up so you can get to your next chance. Well, you ready to draw a name? Do this. All right, I'm going to have Jesse go ahead and look away for just a moment so that this is fair, and I will put all of your names into the hat. And I'll give it a shake here. All right, Jesse, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, go ahead and let all of us know who the winner is. Steve Ferris. Steve, all right, go ahead and just leave a comment, Steve, and we'll get a gift card off to you. And again, the rest of you, thank you very much for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.